So today's tutorial is actually for my dad. Um, he's a 70 year old man, he's retired, he likes sailing, and he's not super technical. And he keeps on messaging me being like, hey, this stuff is really cool, I wish I could use it, but the tutorials that you make, Luca, are way too technical. But there's some good news. Just yesterday, I found a really easy to use one click installer for Stable Diffusion. That, that actually works. Uh, unlike a lot of the other ones so far, this one actually works really well and really smoothly. So now anyone, but especially my dad, can install Stable Diffusion just like it's another program, like WinZip or Photoshop or something. And that's our objective today. By the end of this video, my dad, you, you, my dad, will have installed Stable Diffusion on your computer and it'll be working and you can generate all those nice images of boats and things that you want to do. Okay, now slow down, Dad. We can't just jump in there and start installing things willy-nilly. We need to make sure that we have the right kind of setup first. So, first we have to make sure we have the right kind of computer, then we have to make sure we have enough disk space, and then we have to make sure that our internet connection is secure. Now these checks are really easy to perform. There's no coding, there's no nonsense, there's no nothing, okay? You'll be fine, Dad. We'll, it'll take like two minutes, um, we'll just do it step by step, it'll be really easy, I promise. Okay, so let's do the first check. Do we have a Windows computer? That's the first thing. And you can tell if you have a Windows computer really easily, if you go down to the very corner of your screen here, and if, it, if there's a little Windows symbol there, then you have a Windows computer. And in this case, we do have a Windows computer, so that's great, we can just chuck a tick there. That was really easy, right? We've already made so much progress, we're almost there, so just, just hang in there, Dad. Okay, so we have Windows installed, that's great. Next, we have to make sure that we have the right kind of GPU. Now, what's the right kind of GPU for Stable Diffusion? In this case, all we need is a recent GPU made by NVIDIA with at least four gigabytes of VRAM. That's all we need. Um, and don't worry too much about what VRAM is. It's fine, it's just some sort of fancy technical term. Um, it's just basically how powerful the GPU, GPU is, kind of. But you can kind of think of, think of it like that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find out the name of our GPU, and then we're gonna type that GPU into Google and make sure it fits all those requirements. So let's go. Uh, the way that, the easiest way to find the name of your GPU is to use Task Manager. So Control Alt Delete, click Task Manager, uh, and then you go to the performance tab and somewhere on, on, on one of these it'll say GPU. Uh, I already have mine open but you can click on all of them, click on the GPU one and then the name of your GPU will be up here. A uh, bit, bit of a warning here, sometimes your computer will have two GPUs so just check both your GPUs and as long as one of them fits our requirements, recent, NVIDIA, 4 gigabytes VRAM, then we are fine. So we found the name of our GPU, we're already halfway there. This is really good. So there are two GPU manufacturers. One is NVIDIA and one is AMD. It looks like we have an NVIDIA GPU. In fact, we can be certain we have an NVIDIA GPU because it says NVIDIA right here. That's really good news. If we had an AMD GPU, uh, firstly, it would probably say AMD here. Um, but even if it didn't, it would have different kind of words. Uh, if your GPU has GeForce in it, if it has RTX in it, that probably means that it's NVIDIA. But if it looks a bit more like this, if it says Radon, if it says RX, if it says like Gaming X Trio, uh, anything like this probably means it's an AMD GPU. And if you have an AMD GPU, then unfortunately it's game over. We can't install Stable Diffusion in this way. It just won't work. So you have to make sure that you have an NVIDIA GPU. So I'm lucky. I have an NVIDIA GPU and now I have to make sure that it has at least four gigabytes of RAM. And again, this is actually really easy to find out. You just scroll down here and it'll tell you how much dedicated GPU memory there is. That, that means the same thing as, as RAM or VRAM. Um, so just a little background, your computer has a GPU in it and also has a CPU and the GPU has some RAM and the CPU has some RAM. And in this case, our GPU has eight gigabytes of RAM, which is more than four. So that's really good. Okay, so that's really good news. Uh, we've got an 8 gigabyte GPU, it's NVIDIA, and now we just have to make sure that it's kind of recent. And when I say recent, I just mean made in 2018 or later. So if you got your computer recently, you're completely fine. Um, 
In my case, I just want to double check. So the only way I know to double check really is go to Google. So I'm just going to look at this name. I'm going to type it into Google. How old, how old is the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 270 Super? I'm just going to ask Google, see what it says. And it says, okay, great. July the 9th, 2019, I am well in the clear. As long as your GPU was pub was created in 2018 or later, then you're fine. So that's excellent. We've done, we've checked all that out. It's our GPU, it ticks all the boxes. Recent NVIDIA, at least four gigabytes of RAM. Now, that was actually the hardest thing we're gonna do today. So, you know, we can relax. We're already up at the top of the hill. Now we're going down. So this is like, this is good stuff. You still there, Dan? You still hanging in? You still with us? Hopefully, I really hope you are. Okay, the next question we have to answer is how much RAM do we have? And again, remember the GPU has its own RAM, the CPU has its own RAM, they each have their own kinds of RAM. So we already know we have enough GPU RAM, now we need to make sure that we have at least 16 gigabytes of CPU RAM. All we have to do is check this performance tab of Task Manager again. And then rather than the GPU tab, we go to the Memory tab. And on the Memory tab, it'll say how much this is talking about CPU RAM. This is talking about how much CPU memory is being used. Okay, and right up here it says really plainly and easily to see 32 gigabytes, right up here. So you can have a look at your number here and as long as it's above 16 or it is 16, then we're good to go. And we can put our last tick in this computer box and we're all done. And we have the right kind of computer. So that's really good. Okay, and these two steps are actually quite easy as well. We have to make sure that we have 20 gigabytes of disk space left. So this is, this is very easy. You go to the, the file explorer, you go down to local disk C and you give it a right click and then you go to properties. And this will tell you how much space you have left on your computer. So in my case, I have used 329 gigabytes of space and I have 62 gigabytes of space left, which is more than 20. So that's wonderful. Now we can close all this and just put a tick here. And we're so close now. We are so close. Now we just have to make sure that we have a secure internet connection. As long as you have like a local landline based internet connection with like a modem, as long as you have that kind of a setup and you're not using mobile Wi-Fi, you're fine. If you are using mobile internet from a phone, then that could be good as well, but you just have to make sure that your plan is really strong and that you have a lot of reception and that you won't be moving around or anything like that. So as long as you have a landline, you're fine. If you have a mobile internet, maybe you'll have to do a, do a few more checks and make sure that your internet is really properly secure. But I have a landline. Um, I'm looking right here. This is my local landline. So boom, tick. And we're all done. That's everything. Okay, now I've linked in the description the website that you have to go to now to do the install. Okay, this is going to be really, really, really easy. It's called Art Room. Here we go. And this is a bit of a strange website. You're gonna look at all the different areas in this website and it's gonna look a bit weird. You know, it, it'll load slowly. It looks a little bit unfinished, you know, but that's okay, right? These guys are not scammers. They're not gonna take your money or anything like that. This is a perfectly safe website to use. It's just a very new company and they're trying to move really fast and they wanted to get this product out really fast. So even though the website looks a little bit strange, it's okay. All you have to do is click this big download button and it'll download the installer for us. It's 200 megabytes, so it should install, you know, pretty quickly. I'm just gonna start a stopwatch now so that we can track the download speed and you'll know how long to expect this download to take. Um, but I'm just gonna cut to, I'm gonna cut to it finished because otherwise I'll be sitting here for like 10 minutes twiddling my thumbs. Okay, so that took two minutes and eight seconds, pretty quick. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna find out what we downloaded. So go to File Explorer, go to Downloads, or maybe you save it to a different location, just find out where you saved it. And it'll be called artroomsetup.exe. All you have to do is double click that. And now it'll start an installer just like any other kind of installer. You know, like you're installing Photoshop, you're installing WinZip, you're installing 7-Zip, something like that. So don't, don't worry too much, it's fine. Okay, so now this thing is probably gonna pop up, which says, warning, you know, beware of this file. It's an EXE file, who knows what it's gonna do? 
and you know Windows does have your best interests at heart they know that people can make exe files that can destroy your computer and take all your sensitive data and all of that I personally trust these guys I already installed this on my other computer and everything seems fine and I'm about to install this on a second computer right now and there are other people online who are doing tutorials and have installed this and no one seems to have any complaints so click on this more info button here that they've sort of hidden away and then click run anyway and then they'll they'll put up some other sort of thing you'll have to say you know do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device and you'll have to click yes uh, my screen probably went black there but you'll see a little pop-up that you'll have to deal with and then it'll ask you where to install um, I think users Lewin is fine but I'm just gonna change it to documents in this case so Lewin documents because it's, it's very easy to find the documents folder and don't click this keep this unchecked that's really important and now hit next and C program files art room that's fine the main files will be in the documents folder like we asked so now we're just gonna hit install and it's gonna start installing I'm gonna hit that stopwatch again I'm gonna reset it and, and run it oh hang on let me just pause this I got a little pop-up here this is a pop-up that I didn't get last time so let's have a look at this upon pressing OK the installer will install con dependencies model weights to see Lewin documents please wait until the installer is finished installing okay that's completely fine there's no issues there there's no errors there it's just telling us what it's about to do and where it's about to do it that's all fine so we hit OK and now this window will pop up again that's fine just leave it just don't touch either of these windows and I'm gonna start that timer so that we know how long to expect this process to take last time I installed it it took about an hour at least so it's a pretty long process and during this process it's going to be downloading things from the internet it's going to be downloading a lot of things about 20 gigabytes worth of data so you can expect this to take a while and you also have to make sure that your internet connection is is fine and that you're not downloading anything else at the same time or you're not downloading heaps of things at the same time a good thing to do might be just to do this overnight and just leave your computer on overnight okay and we're done it says installation successful in this little box uh, that took an hour and four minutes exactly so not not quite enough for like a like a movie but maybe you could watch a tv show episode something like that game of thrones maybe um installation successful hit the okay and then it says completing the setup and yeah let's run it right why would we not run it let's 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 test it out let's try it out a little bit and see how we go okay so this is a bit of a complex screen don't worry dad we'll work it out together enter a prompt and we're gonna say a a nice sailing ship on an open ocean uh, I think that's something that's something you'd probably be keen for let's go let's give a run and it says a bunch of things loading model it's taking its time apparently let me start that stopwatch again because <laughs> this seems like it's taking a little while okay and you can tell it's working there we go so we got we've asked it to generate three images so here we go and you can see this bar going up and there you go we're done boom finished that's it we have stable diffusion running and that took one click it took me an hour but it took an hour and four minutes but it took one click that's the main thing and now we can look at these images just by clicking on them here okay so now where are these images though where are they on our computer you know if I wanted to go and send this you know for instance to my son or maybe to one of my sisters um, how would I do that well you go to this settings here and under settings it has this thing called image output folder so that's where all the images are going to except there's one little issue actually it's going to this gens folder so it's what we're looking to look for is users Lewin desktop gens it should be something called gens on my desktop so open the, the file system desktop gems okay that makes sense a nice sailing ship on the open ocean and here we go we have these three images very nice boom 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 and of course you know we can make it look nicer we can say open ocean we can give it an art style I am the most famous artist of course is Greg Rutowski I didn't spell his name right so I just found his name I'm putting it back in and let's just make one image this time and we'll run and hopefully this will be a lot a lot quicker yeah this looks like it's a lot quicker 
if you want to find some cool artists, there's this really good website. Yeah, here it is. It just gives you a list of like a whole bunch of popular artists. Yeah, I kind of like this style a bit, so let's try that. So that's, I mean, this is quite nice, right? You really can't go that wrong with Greg Rutowski, uh, or Rutkowski, sorry. Uh, so let's try Robert Hagen. And if the artist is less known, you help it out by saying by artist, and then you have the artist name. But I mean, even that one by Greg looks quite nice, right? I would say. And there we go. That one looks a lot less nice, actually. And there's sometimes a way of making it look a bit nicer is you add more steps, you know, Sometimes more steps, it, it just, it helps sometimes. Sometimes more steps makes it worse, it, it depends. I think it looks a little bit better than the last one, right? It looks a little bit less, uh, less weird, but still a little bit weird. Anyhow, stable diffusion, one click install. So now there's no excuse, okay? Capiche? <laughs> now there's no excuse. Um, and hopefully, hopefully that helps. As long as my dad, as long as you have that installed, that's all you needed to do.